Welcome to another episode of Full Build Friday, where I try to build a character from a comic, game, or similar source using the baseline rules of Pathfinder 2nd Edition. These characters are built on Pathbuilder 2E. Today, folks, is a special day. First off, it's a Friday, and who doesn't love a good Friday? But secondly, and more importantly, it is the birthday of one of my little brothers. As a tiny birthday present, I wanted to do a build for a character that he wanted to see. So this week, I am building Maya from Maya and the Three. I am Princess Maya, Tekka Eagle Warrior. This is a pretty basic build, but we will need to set some goals for it, so let's get to it. Maya is the princess of Tekka, a civilization based on the Aztecs, but is also revealed to be a demigod. The daughter of the king of Tekka, as well as Lady Mikte, the goddess of death. She doesn't really display any powers from this, though is a notably fast healer, which may perhaps be related to her heritage. Following the discovery of a prophecy, Maya styled herself as the Teka Eagle Warrior and embarked on a quest to slay the god of war. Along with the eponymous three, Maya was accompanied by Chiapa, a jaguar battle cat of her royal family. A highly capable warrior, Maya was armed with a weapon I'm sure that I'm pronouncing wrong, a Makpawit, known as Eagle Claw which was made from the blood of gods and able to slay them. With our foundation in place, let's make like a Constructicon and get building. While she does have some divine descent, Maya is a human for her ancestry, though she will utilize the Duskwalker heritage as a reference to her relation to the goddess of death. This grants her low light vision, which becomes dark vision with her gravesite ancestry feat, which is meant to represent the ease with which she operates at night within her show. As a literal princess, Maya can use the royalty background, which grants her the courtly grace's skill feat and makes her trained in society to go along with it. Since Maya doesn't really exhibit any supernatural powers in her combat style and is a pretty straightforward warrior, she'll make use of the fighter class. There's not too much to talk about for this class. Its simplicity is its strength. She'll take power attack from her class feats to give her some of the mighty strikes that she unleashes, and will then become trained in acrobatics, athletics, diplomacy, and nature. The Makwa Wheat existed as a weapon in 1E, but hasn't made the jump to 2E. There is a version of it, but it's not available at early levels, so Maya will initially use a Le Mano to represent her weapon, which is at least conceptually close. This weapon, and the one she's looking at for later, don't have the finesse trait, so this build will focus on strength, with her other physical stats still being important secondary attributes to boost. Immediately at second level, Maya takes a Beastmaster dedication to gain a cat animal companion representing Chiapa. From her skill feats, she can grab Combat Climber because there's a couple scenes that stick in my mind of Maya fighting while being on the side of cliffs, or while climbing giant monsters. It has been well documented that Maya's clock can take a licking and keep on ticking, so at third level she'll take up the Toughness General feat while also increasing her athletics to Expert. With her 4th level, she'll take up Mature Beastmaster Companion to make Chiapa stronger, since within the show, he's a rather burly cat that can serve as a mount for her and others. Quick Jump from her skill feats is a generally handy feat, especially for combat-focused characters such as Maya. The fighter doesn't have a ton of skills, so at 5th level, Maya can use natural skill from her ancestry feats to become trained in Intimidation and Religion. As a fighter, she gains weapon mastery with a single weapon group and will choose clubs, applying to her Leimano and the other weapon I've got my eyes on. With her actual skill increase for this level, Maya increases her acrobatics to Expert. Coming in at 6th level is Dual Handed Assault. Maya wields Eagle Claw in one or two hands at different times throughout the show, and this helps represent it, though it has middling usefulness with the Leimano. It is nice for a small bump of damage at the very least though, so I think it's worth hanging on to. She'll then grab Powerful Leap from among her skill feats, as she does do a decent amount of jumping around in her show. Beautifully representing her healing at 7th level is Fast Recovery, letting her heal more on her own, and more easily recover from diseases and poisons. She'll also increase her athletics to Master Proficiency. 8th level allows her to take Advanced Weapon Training for Clubs, so that she can take up the Clockwork Makwa Wheat, the only version of a Makwa Wheat in this game. Now there is a slight issue with this. It is a two-handed weapon, which means that dual-handed assault has no use with this in her arsenal. Naturally, you can retrain out of it, and probably take something like Sudden Charge. Alternatively, if you want to stick with the Leimano as her weapon of choice and skip the advanced weapon training, 
I would instead take Incredible Beastmaster Companion at this level. I'm not going to go into the specifics of it, because we're going to discuss that a little bit later here. Her skill feat for this level is a little bit easier, all things considered, just being wall jump, since in the fight against Zots, she does some leaping from pillars that they fight amongst. Mai is uniquely equipped to kill gods, and while isn't going to let her do so in Pathfinder, I like Spirit Strikes as her ancestry feat at 9th level. This gives her an ability to harm creatures within her mother's domain, creatures beyond the usual ken of men. She also get a skill increase to acrobatics, boosting it to master. If you took advanced weapon training at 8th level, use your 10th level class feat to gain Incredible Beastmaster Companion. I would personally make Chiapa Savage, because as I mentioned, he's pretty beefy for a Jaguar. If instead you decided to stick with the Le Mano, and already took this feat at 8th level, I would take Cut from the Air, since she has smashed a few range attacks out of the air before they could hit her. Since she already has Combat Climber, she can take Quick Climb for her skill feat at this point as well. By taking Fleet at 11th level, Maya can extend the range of her jumps and also just generally get into the fight faster. Based on her relation to the Goddess of Death, familiarity with a few other gods, and her eventual ascension, she starts increasing her religion with a skill increase, bumping it to Expert. I mentioned before that I like Cut from the Air, so if you didn't get it earlier, take it now at 12th level. If you did already take it, I think Resounding Bravery is a fantastic fit for Maya and her courage, as well as her ability to survive terrible blows. She'll also take Kip up as her skill feat to help her get back in the fight even after she's been knocked down. At 13th level, she can take Resist Ruin to protect against effects from beyond the grave, fitting for the daughter of the Goddess of Death. Much like her last skill increase, she'll boost Religion, making her a master in it. She also becomes a weapon legend with clubs, gaining legendary proficiency with those attacks. For 14th level, Specialized Beastmaster Companion for the Bully Specialization helps to make Chiapa even beefier, befitting this burly battle beast. The Pilgrim's Token skill feat uses her religion, can represent her key to the Divine Gate, and is also handy for representing her eagerness in the face of danger. Incredible Initiative at 15th level further explores her gung-ho attitude, and she'll also increase her athletics to Legendary with her skill increase. Coming in at 16th level is Side by Side, which has a little bit of a story behind my choice for it. Within the series, Chapa is traumatized for much of it, and is unable and unwilling to join the fight. But in the end, he joins together to help defend his friends and his people. And I kind of like signifying that with this feat coming in a little bit later. With her religion investment, divine heritage, and battle readiness, I did also like battle prayer as a skill feat for Maya. Fitting her journey to the underworld and to avoid taking heroic presents, no, it's not a bad one for her, I like Death's Call so that she can journey to her mother's domain. Acrobatics also gets increased to legendary. Like I said when taking power attack, Maya tends to make big beefy hits. So at 18th level, she grabs Overwhelming Blow so that she can decide when she gets crits. Notably, this feat does kind of work a bit better with the Leimano, since it has the Fatal Trait. A solid alternative to this is Fury's Focus, which really only works with the Clockwork Makwawit. While she grabbed the Battle Prayer with her last skill feat, this time she can gain Sacred Defense for similar reasons as taking that other feat. I do like taking stuff like this, these feats that I don't often get to use, and this gives me a chance to sort of show them off. With 19th level comes Incredible Investiture, so that she can wield more magical equipment, which just makes sense to me for a demigod as a sort of innate power to them. With Acrobatics and Athletics already at Legendary, this skill increase will go to Religion so that it can match those other skills. For her final class feat at 20th level, Maya uses Weapon Supremacy to become permanently quickened with an extra action that can only be used for strikes, allowing her to weave in extra strikes between her powerful attacks. Her final skill feat is Divine Guidance, befitting the times that she reached out to Apush or other deities for help. This was a pretty straightforward build, and we have come to its end, which means it is time to review what we've put together so far. Maya is a Duskwalker human fighter with a royalty background, which represents her being the princess of the Kingdom of Teka. Her heritage is a rough approximation of her descent from the Goddess of Death, though the power she gains from this relation is sparse. Fast Recovery references her swift healing after her bones have been broken or dislocated. She wields Eagle Claw, represented as a Leomano or a Clockwork Makwa Wheat, and makes powerful blows with it through the likes of Power Attack and Overwhelming Blow. Its ability to slay the supernatural comes from her spirit strikes, though this likely won't be enough for her to kill the gods. The presence of Chiapa is not always assured given his fears, but this build represents him through the use of the Beastmaster dedication with a cat-animal companion that focuses on bulking up with the savage advancement and bully specialization. Maya meets many myths and monsters. 
matching their mysticism with her mere mortal might and mastery over martial matters. Share what you think of this build and what other characters you'd like to see by leaving a comment. You can check out the blog for a breakdown of the build that also includes items and suggestions for a free archetype game. That, along with the Monster Monday, Twitter, and Discord are linked in the description below. Thanks for watching and have a fantastic Friday. And a happy birthday, Blintz! If it is to be, it is up to me.